Greetings and aloha, everybody in Facebook world. Ronnie Landis coming to you live. Uh, just wanted to share some ideas and some insights with all of you and uh, some things I want to talk about. I've been doing a series of videos focused on the topic of addiction, focused on the brain, uh, repairing the dopamine neurotransmitter system, and essentially how to transform your life by transforming your need of need for addictions, right? And so I've done a number of videos uh, the last couple days talking about this theme. I'm going to talk about it again today, and uh, let's see where it takes us. I want to talk about a few key principles. And by the way, this topic and these topics are the most important topics in all of health, in all of psychology, in all of psychiatry, if you want to even use that kind of term. I'm not really into psychiatry because psychiatry is really just a pharmaceutical arm of, of conventional psychology. It's really just peddling psychiatric drugs like serotonin reuptake inhibitors, antidepressants, um, that kind of thing, opioids, basically all that kind of thing. Um, and that's not really what I'm into. What I'm into is actually rebuilding the neurotransmitters in your brain that form serotonin, that, that are serotonin, that are dopamine, that are choline or GABA, and repairing the neuropathways in the brain, the myelin in the brain, the glial cells in the brain, repairing the brain as a whole. Because when you repair the brain, you're not just medicating the brain, but you repair the brain in the way that your brain structure is formed, then you repair the human being. You repair the thought patterns, you repair the psychology of the person when you repair the damage done to the physical brain itself. So that's a little bit about what I want to talk to you here as it relates to addiction. Now, let me just share something with you, if I may. This topic of addiction is a very interesting one in our society because our entire society is predicated on creating addicts. It's predicated on creating consumers, right? The consumer culture. Um, right on, Micah. Great to see you, brother. Um, our entire society is based on con creating consumers. And a consumer is by its very nature an addict. Consumerism is addiction. Addiction is karma. Karma blocks your dharma, and dharma is your purpose. Dharma is your authenticity. Dharma is your authentic path. And if you are caught up in addiction, you're caught up on the karmic wheel of samsara, which creates samskaras, which are the, the basically the trauma, the traumatization of your soul. Now, you may be thinking like, whoa, okay, what the? <laughs> okay, that sounds really good, and I think he has a point, but what is he talking about? What am I talking about? What I'm talking about is the psychological damage that has been done to us as a culture and as people, which is also part of the addiction cycle that we have uh, basically been put into. The Wetiko virus, exactly, exactly, Mike. I mean, obviously, I know you know that. And uh, that's, a, that's a whole subject in of itself. I'll probably make a note of that to talk about on a different video. This whole Wetiko mind virus, I got into this a number of years ago. And uh, that, that in of itself is so powerful. And, and just on that tip, there is a mind virus going around in society. And it, it takes different forms, right? I'm not going to get into all that because I want to stay on topic here. But let's just talk about addiction because when somebody is addicted, they have a mental parasite. There is a psychic parasite at play that is driving the compulsion to do self-destructive things right? That's right. Like superficial addictions. Like, okay, that's great. This is actually a good thing to, to riff on. So, you know, what my friend Micah is bringing up here is very interesting because most people, when they think of addiction, they point to that, the, the addictive habit itself. Like, okay, it's the coffee, it's the tobacco, it's the cannabis, it's the, uh, the pornography, it's the masturbation for men in particular, like, uh, you know, the addiction to pleasure and immediate gratification, which is plugged into kind of pornographic programming around sexuality. Um, what else? You know, food habits, food, uh, food addictions, processed food, GMO food, um, cooked food addictions, like well, whatever it is, right? Like whatever you, your thing is, whatever your shtick is, 
a lot of people are like, okay, I have an alcohol addiction. Well, what is alcohol? They call alcohol spirits, right? Well, alcohol has a way of opening up certain um, certain chambers, energetic chambers within the person. You might call that the auric field or the chakras or some part of their psyche or whatever. I don't, you know, just call it whatever you want. But it has a it has a spiritual a spiritual um, what's the word I'm looking for. Um, a connotation of some sort. What I mean is like, so alcohol is spirit, right? So is the, is the addiction to alcohol, let me get to this point, is the, is the alcoholism the problem or is there a psychic parasite that's driving the chemical stimulus, the chemistry set of the body, creating a, a, um, an agitation or a tension within the person so they need to soothe themselves to soothe the tension so they reach for the alcohol or they reach for the, the tobacco or they reach for the cannabis or whatever the case is, right? Or that person has adrenal fatigue so they reach for the coffee and the caffeine to get them stimulated, to get them up and going so they can get back onto their, their busy life because they have a workaholism addiction, right? But all those are superficial addictions, right? And that's a very good way of looking at it because sometimes we get caught up in those things and think that those are the things and we obsess over, okay, I got to get, I got to stop my coffee habit. I got to stop my tobacco habit. I got to stop my workaholism habit. But we don't realize that that's just the outward manifestation, the habit manifestation of what the actual addiction is. The addiction is some kind of thought form. It's the tension in our mind. It's the tension in our nervous system, the contractive tension, and it's causing um, it's causing attention. It's causing stress. So let's say this just to keep it simple and to keep the flow of the conversation going. The real addiction is some kind of stress. It's like a stress fracture. It's a fracturing through stress, through constant stress, 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 not enough rest and recovery, not enough sleep, like good sleep quality. Maybe our nutrition program or our food habits are out of alignment, um, whatever the case may be. And so something inside of us is imbalanced and we're reaching outside of us for a substance or for something that stimulates typically dopamine in order for us to feel a temporary pleasure. We self soothing in other words, right? So we're reaching outside of ourselves to trigger that dopamine response, that dopaminergic response. And then that signals the pleasure and reward systems in the brain. And our brain goes, <sighs> it relaxes for a moment. But here's what happens. Now you get that little bit of sensation of soothing, you get that reprieve, you get that relief, but here's where the trap happens. The brain becomes addicted to that stimuli of, of pleasure, of, of relief, because ultimately there's a stress pattern inside somebody's psyche that's creating, or in their physical body, their nervous system, right? Which ultimately is gonna create the same thing. It's gonna create a, a psychic stress, an emotional stress. And people are carrying their emotional weight with them. They're not releasing the weight and they're not healing the trauma that they're carrying with them. So it creates a psychic burden. And so we constantly need to relieve ourselves, relieve, relieve anything we can do to relieve the pressure. So the brain, because it sets up a priority of survival in it in in the brain it creates a reference point of like okay that thing that i did that thing that he did or she did gave me relief it calmed the system right it, it calmed the inflammation for a second so we need to do more of that right so every time somebody gets stressed they get overwhelmed there's something there that they reach for in order to relieve the pressure right? Okay. Like, oh, what is this? The oral fixation, it creates a serotonin production, the oral fixation, or when you chew like on corn chips or crackers or something, what is that, right? The, the, those little habits, those little processed food habits, what is that? You produce serotonin from the chewing action. Ah, it creates serotonin and it's like, or smoking. It's like, Okay, but then what happens? You form a habit. 
And that habit now creates a self-destructive habit. And now the brain has actually become addicted to the habituation of that thing because underneath the addiction um, to that habit is actually an addiction to stress. And it's addiction to stress. This is what our world is dealing with. We, we are dealing with an addiction to, to stress, an addiction to struggle, an addiction to hardship. I talked about this yesterday in the last video where I said, do you have an addiction to struggle? Do you have a pattern where you dig holes for yourself in order to climb your way out of it? Every time you make a little bit of progress in your life, is there something inside of you that has to just self-sabotage it, right? Oh, we're getting close to the mountain, getting close to the mountain. Oh, let me just jump off the mountain real quick just so I can feel like I'm being productive by climbing my way back up the mountain. Let me dig myself another hole just so I can feel the accomplishment of climbing my ass out of that hole again, over and over and over. What did the Buddhist call this? The wheel of samsara. Right, And every time we repeat these self-destructive patterns, we actually inflict stress fractures upon ourselves. It's, it's not actually like, okay, I'm getting stronger every time I do it. You're actually getting weaker every time you do it because it's self-inflicted mediocrity. It's self-inflicted um, self-saboteur energy. There's a self-saboteur inside of us and it's creating an addictive relationship with struggling, right? That's the real addiction. So the, the again, the coffee, the tobacco, the cannabis, the whatever the substance is, the alcohol, the pornography, um, the whatever, there's so many different things, but those are like the main things, the social media, I don't talk about that that much. I need to talk a lot about that. Actually, the social media addiction, right? And the dopamine response that we get from checking our inbox, checking our messages. Oh, did I get a like? Did I get a comment? That social engagement through this virtual interface, which is an artificial reality. It's an artificialized reality. So we're disconnected from reality, i.e. our actual direct experience. And therefore, we don't produce serotonin right because serotonin is produced from being in the moment. Serotonin production is all about the moment. It's contentment in the moment, the felt lived experience. Dopamine is in the future. It's anticipation for the future. What are all, what do all addictions have in common? It's all about the future, right? It's this anticipation for some kind of pleasure or reward in the future. But what do we know about addictions? Every time we get there, it's never as good as it felt getting there right? Trying to get there always feels better than actually when we get there. So what happens when we get there? We drop. We have a drop in serotonin. We have a drop in dopamine and that actually depletes our adrenal glands. It depletes our nervous system. And we keep these cycles going and going and going. And this is actually, if you study um, neurodegenerative conditions like I have for almost 10 years now, I've been studying the brain for about 10 years, like, like voraciously, like neuroscience, neuroplasticity, epigenetics, all of it. Like I've gone very, very deep into all those areas, as deep as anyone in my position, probably in my generation in terms of the work, the field that I'm in has ever gone, probably in integrating all these things together. And I can tell you, I have a pretty solid comprehension of all these subjects and how they all work together. Um... Where's I going with that? Uh, so when you look at, this is something very alarming and we all need to get a handle of. There's something that happens epigenetically through addiction. There's DNA damage that occurs. So think about this. If you're going to have children and you have addictions, you had better start thinking about clearing those addictions from your cellular, your cellular matrix because they will transfer over into the, the, the next offspring. 
your children will inherit the epigenetic DNA transference of the addictions and the addiction frequencies that you carry. I, I This is through the Gene Keys work with Richard Rudd, who's a good friend of mine now, a colleague and a very good friend of mine at this point. We've done like six interviews together. He's writing the foreword for my new book, by the way, The Addiction-Free Lifestyle, which comes out in about two months. Richard Rudd's writing the foreword. So I have a little bit of an insight into that particular body of work. Um, where was I going? Oh, let me complete this point though. Um, that, that should alarm people, by the way, like, here's a, here's the thing. I'm going to keep, I'm going to get to my point about neurodegenerative conditions, but I want to, I want to hit this real quick for you. You got to get this. People in our society are asleep. They're sleeping like totally, like completely asleep. Do not understand the implications of the addictions that we just rinse and repeat every single day on the wheel of some sorrow, the wheel of suffering, but you bet, but you will get this. Think about it. There is a um, an aboriginal, uh, uh, what do you call it? An aboriginal principle or an aboriginal um, saying, if you will, which is the sins of the father passed down to the son. The sins of the father passed down to the son. What is the root etymology of sin? It's missing the mark, right? Well, if you study theology and you study like Christian mysticism and you actually understand what sin is, okay, it's, it's missing the mark. It's a misalignment. Well, what's that mean from a DNA, from a, from a, um, uh, um, from a DNA perspective? Well, there's a misalignment in the DNA. There's a damage in the DNA coding that transfers to the next generation. Why is it that we are, our generation nowadays, the last couple of generations is the most weak immunologically, the immune system, the immunologically, the least resilient, psychologically, the most feeble. You could use the word feminine, the feminization of the masculine, all that. Why is all this? Well, because they're, they're addict, it's an addicted generation. The generation is completely addicted and the generation before was a little less addicted, but still passing on the unreconciled traumas and addictions from the past. And it's just perpetuated. And now the generation today is just full blown addiction, but it's a high, high functional addiction. Highly functional addicts is basically what our society is. Highly functional addicts. And I could go on and on about that. I could riff on and on about that. And that's why I've, ri I've begun writing the, I'm about 70% done with this book, The Addiction Free Lifestyle. It comes out in about two months time now. And then I have, I want to let you all know, by the way, as we're going down this rabbit hole, I, you need to know about a program that I'm launching in a couple weeks. It's called the Ultimate Dopamine Reset Program. It's a five-week personalized mentorship program. I'm taking a group of people through the most powerful brain remodeling, dopamine rebooting, addiction transforming or transcending program that anybody has ever been through, at least in a, a digital context. And it's the most powerful work that I've ever done. And it's life changing and it's available right now. And I'm taking a group of people through this process and it can change your life. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and you need to know that this is happening, whether you enroll in it or not, you need to know it's happening. Maybe there's somebody in your life that you know that really needs this information. This is the most powerful information in all of health. I'm telling you this right now from my personal experience. If you learn to reboot your dopamine system and your neurotransmitters, and you can accurately identify the habit patterns in your life that are not serving you, right? And you can identify how to actually transcend them, not with force, not even with willpower, but rebooting your brain, your brain will do something very interesting. It will remodel itself. Your brain will actually rewire itself in reference to the habits that you start to adopt. Every, every habit and pattern and thought pattern and emotional pattern that you rehearse, your physical brain neuroplastically will rewire itself, but you have to, the, the challenge is you've already set the neuro pathways in a particular way and your neurotransmitters have all fired in a particular sequence. So when you try to change a habit, 
you have 95% of your unconscious mind overriding the 5% of your conscious willpower. It's exhausting and most people don't have the adrenal fortitude um, to actually go through that process by themselves, which is why most people fail and why most people are on the wheel of samsara over and over and over trying to go, trying to do it, trying to do it, but don't get anywhere, don't get very far because they're trying to override a process that they don't even quite understand how they got themselves into. I can help you with that. People like me can help you with that. And that's what I'm talking about, how to actually override the neurological pathways so you can reset your brain back to neutrality and actually retrain the brain because the secret of, neuro, of the neuroscience of all this is that your brain has become addicted. And I don't just mean you, I mean me too. All of our brains have become addicted to pleasure and reward and immediate gratification. Ding, 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 notification. Ding, 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 notification. Ding, 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 like, love, heart, right? All that, like all you guys hearting right now, I appreciate you hearting, by the way. I don't, and you know how I know that I've cleared certain dopamine triggers in my, my system? I don't get any sensation when you heart in love. It doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. Thank you. Please keep hearting. Please keep loving. I don't get anything though that's like, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you know, not, there's nothing. I'm neutral because I'm on a mission. And, and, th and, and I want you to pay attention to something that's occurring right now. Listen to me, feel the tonality, feel the energy that's coming from me. Look into my eyes, feel the energy, feel my presence. I'm able to be this way. This is how I am basically 24 seven, most of the time, you know, I'm laughing and playing and stuff. Um, but I'm like, in t there's an intensity to me because I'm grounded and rooted in my body and I'm on a mission. And because my dopamine system is firing on all cylinders, I have healed my adrenal fatigue. I've healed my kidneys and your kidneys are run on two main things. Most people don't even know this. They're trying to heal their kidneys and they're doing all these different herbs and stuff. But guess what? Your, your kidneys and your adrenals in particular run on two ingredients, sodium, i.e. salt and dopamine. If you have blown out your dopamine receptors and your dopamine system, pleasure, 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 then you're not going to be able to do the hard things in life because you won't have the adrenal energy and you're gonna have something called adrenal fatigue, chronic adrenal fatigue, adrenal wipeout, salt and dopamine. First thing that you do, I'll give you this, this hint right now. The first thing you do, and this helps to heal addictions, it's also what pregnant mothers crave um, throughout all the cycles of, of the conception process um, is sodium and salt. But most people don't tell you this. Most people still think salt is bad for them. Your body needs salt. It's part of hydration. You can't hydrate your body without it. And your adrenals run on salt. A lot of your brain runs on salt too. Sodium, salt, boom, boom. Because it's minerals. It's full spectrum minerals, right? <sighs> right? Just those basic ideas, those basic things. Now, let me connect this thought that I, I went down this rabbit hole. Neurodegenerative conditions. What's that have to do with addictions? Well, think about this. When you study Parkinson's research, there's something interesting that comes up. What's Parkinson's? It's a neurodegenerative problem where, where there's basically motor function. It's a dysfunctional motor system issue. And the ner nervous system is kind of going haywire. People can't control themselves. It's, um, it's a dopamine deficiency. It's well, demyelination of the nervous system, but also dopamine deficiency. So what do doctors do or Parkinson's doctors? They get their patients on pharmaceutical forms of something called L-DOPA. L-DOPA is a precursor for dopamine production in the body, right? That's pretty important to know about. Dopamine is a pretty powerful neurotransmitter hormone and all of our addictive tendencies are burning out our dopamine receptors, burning out dopamine production, and we become addicted to the effects of dopamine 
but it's artificialized dopamine and production and we become addicted to pleasure and because we don't have adrenal energy anymore, we have adrenal fatigue, we avoid pain and discomfort in order to get more pleasure. So here's the cycle. It's a psychological problem that ends up happening because our brain becomes addicted. We revert to the habits of being an addict, an addiction, a high functional addict, right? That's that's what our society is, um, high functional addicts. Um, and so we chase pleasure in order to avoid pain, chasing pleasure in order to avoid pain. I mean, I don't know if that's the cycle that you want to be. I certainly don't want to be on that cycle because it doesn't create greatness. It doesn't create accomplishment. It doesn't create fulfillment and it actually damages the brain. So let me, uh, I'm going to conclude this video. We talked about a lot. We went and riffed a lot here. Again, I really want you to think about this. Um, you know, if you're really vibing and resonating and you see this value in your own life, I really want you to consider this upcoming five week mentorship program that I'm launching the ultimate dopamine reset program. It may be the most powerful program that you ever go through. And uh, I can promise it, it is life changing without a doubt. I'm going through my own dopamine reset protocol, even somebody like me. And it, within the first couple days, it has been absolutely incredible, super powerful. My brain is on fire, high energy all the time, but it's my energy, not some stimulant, not some coffee, not some thing outside of me. It's my energy. And that, and if you're feeling like, whoa, he's like, there's like some intense energy coming from him because I'm, I'm sick and tired of giving my power away. I'm, 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 I'm really wanting people to stop giving their power away to the government, to politicians, to fake science, to the media, to, to substances that we've developed, that we've created addictions to. We've been trained to be addicts and give our power away and make excuses and all these things, but we got to get over that and we got to take our sovereignty back as human beings. Our sovereignty is our birthright. And look, you can, you, your brain can operate at total peak capacity by making a few different changes in your life, but you need support. We all need support. I have two mentors. I have two coaches right now in two different departments of life that I pay every month. And is it cheap? No, it's not. But you know what? It's worth it because I value my life. I value my family. I value the results I want to get in my life. I value what I can do with my life by getting support. And that's what this is all about. So just harping on that, the ultimate dopamine reset program, it's March or no, 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 November 20th is when it launches. It's open for the first 20 to 25 people. We're going through enrollment processes right now. The website is HH, uh, hhphealth.com forward slash dopamine. Um, if you have financial considerations, all you need to do is just send me a message and let's talk about it. This is open to everybody. Um, so it is, you know, the opportunity is available, but you have to, you have to take one step forward. Reach out to me if you're interested. I'd love to talk to you. I'll send you the link. Um, I'll, I'll put the link in the comments below. And this will be one of the most powerful pro programs, if not the most powerful program that you've ever done, because the results are immediate and the results are real and the results are what you take with you. It's not theory, right? This is not theory. This is immediately experiential. You are going to get a roadmap. You are going to get a lifestyle blueprint. You're going to get a protocol and you're going to get me for five weeks taking you through my process that I put myself and my private clients through. Um, and it is absolutely the best of the best. I promise you that. And it's a distillation of my entire book, The Addiction Free Lifestyle. Again, that comes out in about two months. So that's enough promotion. I just want to get that out to, to you guys so you know that that's happening. Send me a DM. If this resonates with you, I want you to take this seriously because I am so fired up and passionate about this um, for so many different reasons. But the main reason is that um, I, I just want to see all of us go to the next level. It's available. Oh my God. It's available to all of us right here, right now, always. And just always it is available to us, but we have to make the choice to change. We have to make the choice to ask for support. We have to make the choice 
to change what we've done to get to where we are because where we are is or what got us to where we are is not going to get us to where we want to go. Very important principle in all of this. What got us to where we are will not get us to where we are and pe- where we want to go. And people get stuck in this all the time. They think, okay, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm good. Everything's good. And I'll just keep doing the same thing over and over. And then eventually I'll get to where I want to be. That's a, that's an addiction to mediocrity. That's a cop out. That is a cop out. That's just being addicted to my comfort zone. It's all addiction energy. It's addiction logic. Actually, I'm addicted to my comfort zone. I don't want to go outside of my comfort zone. I don't want to take a risk because I don't believe in life. That's really what it comes down to. If you really, if you really are honest with yourself and you really break it down and go to the root of, of those thought forms, it's really like, mm, I don't really trust that life has my back. This is the root of all addiction, by the way, I promise you. I don't trust that life has my back. I don't trust that there's a higher power. I don't trust that what brought me into the world is going to get me through it. I don't trust in myself is where that really goes. Whether you believe in a higher power or not, do you believe in yourself? Because that's the only way you get through this thing. And this thing called addiction, this thing called limitation, this thing called mediocrity, this thing called self-sabotage. It's a, it's a suffering. It's an addiction to suffering. And I'm asking you, like I ask myself every day, I'm asking all of us to release the bondage of addiction to self-suffering, to self-sabotage, to self-defeating behaviors because the world needs us. The world, have you seen what's going on in the news? It's a circus, <laughs> like, and everybody's putting their money on whoever and they're like, that person's gonna save us. Ha- have they ever? Has anybody ever saved us? No, because that's not how this game works. We have to save us. And the only way to do it is to transcend who we're used to being in order to become who we can be. And who we can be is somebody who doesn't have addictions. Somebody who's not chemically codependent to some substance just to feel good. Just to feel like they have some energy. Your dreams need you. Your children need you. Your children now or your children that will be. They need you and they need you to be addiction free. That's And I'm just telling you the truth. This is my heart and my soul you're feeling right now. I'm just telling you the truth. That's just what it is. And that is why I'm writing this book. And that's why I've created this program, the Ultimate Dopamine Reset Program. Last thing I'll say about that is that It's not enough to just psychologically do the work. You actually have to reboot the neurotransmitter system. You have to reset the dopamine system in order to make this work. Otherwise, it it will not work. I promise you, there's no bypassing this process. If you want to overcome addiction and you want to overcome who you've been in your patterns and, and move on to the next echelon of what's possible for you, It's one part psychological empowerment, another part chemical empowerment. You have to overcome the the addicted brain. The addicted brain will continue to trick you into doing things that hold you back, that hurt you, that create self-defeating perpetual behaviors. And you you know what I'm saying is true. You know what I'm saying too? Because you're conscious of the things that you do that don't serve you but there's a reason why you haven't changed it yet. There's a reason why those patterns persist every day, even though maybe you've quit something a hundred times, right? There's a reason why it keeps on going. So basically what I'm saying is, how long do you want it to keep on going? Do you, do you want to keep doing it the hard way, the wheel of samsara, or do you want to do it the easy way? And by easy, I don't mean it's going to be easy, but it is simple and it is quick. It's like ripping the band-aid off really quick, stings for a second, but oh, does it feel better once you just do it. And that's what I'm offering you in the Ultimate Dopamine Reset Program. Reach out to me, send me a direct message. I'll send you the link. I'll put the link in the comment box below. Um, It's a pleasure to serve all of you. Even if all I I get to do is give you these messages, it's a pleasure and I'm happy to do it. Uh, So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was valuable. Ronnie Landis signing off and I hope to see you in uh, either that program or uh, to be able to support you in one way or another. Much love and aloha.